Hi everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install ASAV in KVM running on Ubuntu. So let's hop over to take a look at how the deployment will look like. So this is what we're going to do. I've already installed uh, KVM on Ubuntu, as you can see here. Uh, there is a virtual bridge, right, which I've created. Uh, not really a default, but uh, I've uh, done some configuration on the network side. But we're going to focus on creating three new virtual bridge. Right? Virtual bridge 11 with uh, IP address 192.168.55, uh, class C subnet, virtual bridge 12, and then virtual bridge 13 which we will correspond to the outside, the inside, and the management interface of the ASAV. And I'll show you how to uh, install ASAV use, using the virtual install command. Okay, so let's hop over to the SSH session that I've already started. There's two main parts to this video. One is to show you how to create the bridge in case you are starting afresh like me. Uh, and then the next part is to install the ASA KVM. Uh, ASA into KVM. Okay, first let's check out the bridge that is already configured in the system. We can do a bridge show. You can see that default I have uh, a couple of virtual bridge that has already been installed. Next, uh, let's look at the um, virtual uh, net list command to show what is currently available on my KVM, right? They are all uh, active and I've defined uh, auto start for this. So there's a couple of ways to create a um, KVM bridge. You can use net create, uh, for a temporary or transient configuration or using NetDefine to uh, create a persistent uh, network. Okay, let's clear this. So next, uh, we're going to start by creating a couple of XML file for our bridge setup. So let's check. Okay, uh, let's create a couple of the files in my temp directory. We'll give it a virtual bridge 11.xml. Okay, uh, I have already have the configuration copied from uh, my website. Uh, it's the same as what is in the Cisco website with a couple of parameter change. I'm going to create a bridge called bridge 11. Uh, we're going to create a unique uh, MAC address. And then we're going to do a subnet of 55. Um, Class C.1, let's save this. Okay. Then virtual bridge 12. Do the same, give it a unique name, virtual 12. And then uh, unique MAC address. Six dot one. Save this configuration. Do it for thirteen. And then fifty seven subnet. Oops.
Okay, so once we've done, uh, we're going to define the net, uh, this tree virtual bridge so that it becomes persistent. So the command is sudo brsh because I'm not running in root. I need the sudo command net define followed by the respective file. Okay, let's define the configuration first okay and then uh, by default it's not started we can net list we should see that it's not up right so to start the network or the virtual bridge we need to use the command net start virtual bridge 11 12 and 13 okay so if we do a list now you can see that it is created right it is uh, persistent but then it is not auto start so what you can do is to do auto start if you want to automatically start the session when the machine reboots itself now let's look at you can see that all the various uh, interfaces are created and up. So you can also show IP address show the particular bridge to see the IP address configured. Okay, so that's pretty much the first part in terms of creating virtual bridge. If, if you don't have it, uh, default um, we are creating three in the ASAV you can support up to 10 interfaces okay now that we're done with this configuration next we're gonna configure the install script right so we're gonna create an install script called install you can give it any name you want dot sh let's put it into the temp directory so that it autos clear okay now you can copy the template from the Cisco website or in, on my blog, I have a similar configuration. So we're going to use the virtual install command. Okay, space. Okay, make sure you remove all the spaces that is not necessary if not you have issue so we're going to connect into the qemu uh, system we're now gonna, we're going to define three different uh, network right so we, let's assign it to the respective virtual bridge that we have created you can change this later in your virtual manager as well but since we're doing it now might as well do it so we're going to give it a name cpu host architecture is using x86 you can leave it blank if uh, it will take what is in the system machine this is from the official guide uh, my machine is not running pc-1.0 uh, you can use the lsbh command or shw command to find out what is a machine i'm not going to do that what i do is going to delete it it will take the default from the system right virtual cpu one two gig of ram which is the minimum uh, supported os type command i believe is no longer valid i'm going to change it to os info linux 2020 i might get an error we'll tweak that later virtual type kvm i'm going to import from uh the directory that we were in just now so oops i'm gonna get that later let's just delete this first and then uh, you can configure a day zero I, uh, ISO of uh, config and convert into ISO uh, so that the system will take the config when it's boot. I'm not going to do that. Let's delete this. 
uh, using console type using the virtual input output. Now, this is the part that uh, you take note whether you're installing ASAV or FTDV. Uh, if you want to see the whole process of the booting, uh, you need to configure serial through Telnet, right? I've not figured out how to use the default serial, so we're going to do that, right? So you notice that the uh, I'm going to Telnet to the local host and then a uh, IP, uh, Mac, um, a port that is uh, defined. Now make sure this port is not already in use. Once that's done, you just save. We still have to uh, find my file. So this is the default directory that uh, I store all my images. Oops. Uh, let's, and this is the file that I want to activate. So let's just get everything in one string. Okay, let's copy this. And put it into the this path. Okay. Now that we are done, we just need to run, right? Uh, you can actually change it to executable or just issue the command sh, which is the shell command. And then let's see if there's any error. Uh, so this is already in use by other guests. Uh, okay, so this is the official image. Okay, let's find a name. I should have a base image that I've stored somewhere. Let's get that. Okay, so this is the one. So I'm going to copy this to my current directory and give it a SAV zero zero. Mm, can't remember what name I've created. Let's do one 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 dot Q cow two. Okay, let's change the name of our install. Alright, my lab environment. The directory structure can be a bit messy, so you might want to make sure that you copy this into the actual image directory. Okay, so now that we are done, let's uh, run this. Okay, you will see that it is starting to install, waiting to complete. Now what we need to do is clone the session. Let's tell them vertically. Uh, let's close this already. Okay, and then Telnet to the port that we define, right? Now, if you use Virtual Manager, you'll see the first part of the boot up, but you won't see uh, once it passed the loading. So, uh, doing the Telnet in, you will see uh, the boot up process. <coughs> Takes about a couple of minutes for it to finish. I'm going to pause the video and come back uh, when it's done. Okay, now that is uh, completed its installation, you should see a Cisco ASAV prompt, right? Uh, by default, 
There's no default password for ASAV unlike FTDV. So you need to create a new password. Okay, and then uh, you can save the password by issuing a write memory. So that's all for deploying the ASAV into the KVM environment. Uh, what you'll notice is that the uh, installer is not able to check whether it is completed because there's no way for it to get in. So you just have to break out of the installation, which is fine, right? We can see that now it is working. Okay, so there's a couple of things uh, that we want to um, do a couple of validation. So if we go in here and do a show interface uh, brief, IP brief, uh, you will see that by default there are four interfaces. Okay, ignore the internal data interfaces for ASAV. Uh, FTDV is slightly different uh, as this is used for internal communication, so it's created by default. You don't have to map any uh, external port to it. What we're interested in is the Gigabit Ethernet 00 and Gigabit Ethernet uh, 01 as well as the Management VLAN. By default, everything is down. So the first thing that we want to do is to um, configure the IP address. Now, if you're using ASDM, then you want to uh, make sure you configure the management IP uh, followed by the uh, gigabit Ethernet inside and outside, right? So I've already started a VNC session. Uh, let's hop over to my VNC session, as you can see here. Okay, and uh, we're going to go into the ASAV itself, right? Uh, you can see this is the part that you can see from the virtual manager console. You won't be able to see the rest of the boot. But what we're going to see is to validate the IP address, right? Uh, the MAC address. So virtual 11 is in this MAC address. Uh, virtual bridge 12 is in 615F. And then uh, virtual bridge is um, 9FBE. Now, if you have configured the MAC address menu like, like what I've done, right, you can go into show interface, uh, gigabit internet 0 slash 0. Let's configure the outside interface so we can uh, very validate that it's up and running. So let's uh, show interface. You can see this is the MAC address 615F. Let's validate 615S is in virtual bridge 12 and virtual bridge 12 is uh, 56, right? So let's go into config terminal, go to, you can provide feedback, interface, it could be internet 0 slash 0. Uh, let's give it a name outside. When you give it a name outside, the security level will be set automatically. IP address 192.168.56. Just to confirm, this is 12. 12 is 56. And then we give the ASAV IP address. Uh, let's, we've given one for the gateway. Let's do two. 255.255.255.0 and then let's do a no shut. Now while we're at it, let's create the default route. Okay, if you're using DHCP for uh, auto or dynamic IP uh, assignment, then you don't have uh, your default route is pretty much different, right? So you set it to the interface, but since we are doing it manually, we need to route outside, which is our default route, 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
internet now. I'm not sure whether my, oh, I can, right? Which means that my IP table is uh, configured to do masquerading. So now this is done, right? We can now uh, configure the um, ASAV uh, or we have configured the ASAV for the outside interface so we can go into the internet. Now uh, you need to set your domain or oh, sorry, the uh, name server for smart license activation, right? Uh, there are a couple of blocks that I've written. You can check them out. So let's uh, end this and then let's get out of the config, move out of this telnet session. Uh, let's take a quick look at IP tables minus T net minus L. Oops, pseudo. really need to set a not so strong password for my lab testing. Okay, done, right? So we can see that uh, 56, so I do have a masquerade rule here, right? Uh, for 56 subnet, okay? So that's why we are able to go out to the internet. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what I have for this uh, short tutorial to show you how to deploy the ASAV, configure the virtual bridge, and also you know quickly configure the route and IP address so that you can validate that the ASAV is up and running. With that, I'd like to thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.